So I left off and I didn't actually integrate anything. I just broke the integral up into pieces and then said you can integrate. So I'm not going to go in and actually integrate these four pieces here. So I'm going to leave this one right here and then do another example. So we talked through yesterday how to do it. I put that up on YouTube so you can go look at how to do, uh, do them yourself. If you forgot what I said, it'll all be up there. So we're going to do another example right now. These problems take a while, so I can't do that many examples in class. So go to your textbook for some more problems, or you can look at other videos. I'm sure partial fractions is done many, many places on YouTube. So we're going to decompose one over x times x squared plus one squared. Let's get crazy and do x squared and we'll go one, let's do x, here we go. So this will be a little more exciting. So we have two types of factors in the denominator. We have just a single x and an x squared plus one. So all the forms that we need are going to be some either x squared or x squared plus one squared. So first term we get, we'll just go a over x. So I need a degree zero over the degree one right there. Now x doesn't just appear once, it appears x squared. So I have also an x squared term. Now this is a little bit tricky. This is actually a degree one irreducible. So I only need, I don't need a bx plus c. I just need a b on the top. Now I'm on to the x squared plus one. What generic polynomial should I put on top of this x squared plus one? What degree do I need? Degree one. So we're gonna go with cx plus d. And last up, this is appears twice. It's also x squared plus one squared. So it'll be ex plus f. So don't be afraid to use d, e, f, capital, because we don't use those letters, capital letters, very much for most other things that we do. Lowercase d is a different story, but capital D is OK. <coughs> so what was the second step? after we have this huge fraction, generic polynomial fraction lined up. Denominators suck. So get the denominator out of there. So we're multiplying by the full denominator. So on the left side, that's super easy. Cancels it out completely. So on the right side, you can write, we're multiplying by x squared times x squared plus one squared. So multiply everything, the entire equation by that going to be a lot of cancellation. So for every irreducible factor, I, I am going to get uh, one denominator with that factor. So my irreducible factor is actually x. So I get an x, but because it appeared twice, I also have the squared version of that. So the other irreducible factor is x squared plus 1. 
So I get one copy of that, and it appears a second time, so I also get it squared. So it's basically for every irreducible factor, you're going to get a denominator, and then every time it appears, like if it's cubed, you would have first power, second power, third power. So I would have gotten like a, a third one over here if that x squared plus 1 squared appeared as cubed. Is there another question? Uh, you just answered it. All right. So what's? I don't know a square. Uh oh. Yeah, on the B. Okay. Um. Like so the x squared plus, oh, yeah. x squared plus one should that be squared? That, sh yes, those should be square squared first and not there. Okay. So what's good x value? One's okay. Negative ones, not that great either. Zero. zero. Why is zero good? Because we'll lose the first term and the last two terms there. Because wherever I see x, 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 that'll all turn into zero. So I'm going to use x equals zero is a really good choice. So choose x equals 0, what do we get? Negative 1 on the left, we get 0 plus, it looks like b plus 0 plus 0. And we have negative 1 is b. So most things just disappeared. So I told you you can use imaginary numbers. So let's go and just do one for fun. What imaginary number should I use? And I'll underline where you should look. I. I. What's I squared? Negative. Negative 1. So it cancels to plus 1. So we're going to try x equals I. Ooh. What do I do before I do that? I should go and plug in the actual value for B and get a slightly less uh, complicated version of this. So negative 1 is b, so I'm going to, let's see, subtract that. So there was the b term. I'm going to subtract it to the other side, or I should say add it. So it was negative this, so I added it to the other side. Now I'm going to FOIL it out. x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 minus 1 cancels plus x. Now we're ready to try i. So let's go with positive i. We'll probably be a little easier than negative i. Um, so I'll just do the positive i. So we get i to the fourth plus 2i squared plus i equals so the reason we tried i is so anything that was x squared plus 1 is going to be 0. So anything, any place I see x squared plus 1 is going to be 0. So I'm going to get 0 plus 0 plus, now I have to be very careful, ei plus f times i squared. We can do this. Just i squared is negative 1, and i to the fourth is positive 1. And if I don't have any i cubes, but they would be negative i if I had i cubes in here. So we have 1, i squared is negative 1, minus 2, plus i equals just i squared is negative 1, so we're going to get minus ei minus f. So 
any questions on imaginary arithmetic here? All rules are the same, just I squared is negative one out of the fourth regular one. Nothing else, nothing else fancy is happening. All right, one minus two, negative one plus I equals, let's put our I term in the back, so we'll go minus F minus E I. You can tell me what F and E are. Yes, you can. There's a lot of negatives. Let's make everything positive. Multiply by negative 1. We get 1 minus, I'll write 1 plus negative 1i, which is a little silly. And we get F plus EI. All right. This is way easier than you're thinking because you're thinking too much. What does F have to be? 1. one. What does E have to be? Negative one. That's it. There's no. Ver there's just two constants, an f and an e. I gotta have one real part and a negative one imaginary part. I'm basically matching coefficients. It's a little weird. So I'm matching coefficients of i, which is not a variable, uh, but I'm just matching coefficients here. So f equals one. E equals negative one. Any questions on that? So we just match coefficients. All right, we got three of the six letters. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Three of the six, we're halfway there. So we got a linear system with just three unknowns now. So to warn you, if you try negative i, the bad news is pretty much the same stuff's gonna disappear. So you're not gonna learn anything about A, C, or D. So if you try negative I, you're not gonna get any more information out of it. So that won't be helpful. You could try other X values, but what I'm gonna do instead is combine this all together by putting in the E and F values we just got, simplifying it as much as I can, then we're gonna match coefficients. So I'm gonna plug all the values I know in. Another question for you. Yep. So we solve for Uh, you saw you're gonna solve for all of them so I pick X values first because that's faster and I just picked as many X values as I could uh, let's plug these back in and then see there may be another X value we can pick if we're super clever uh, if not we'll just match coefficients and do linear algebra so I need to zoom out a tiny bit more to this version here So I have x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus x equals ax x squared plus 1 plus c x plus d x squared x squared plus 1 e and f e is negative 1 so we get minus x plus 1 times x squared. So we're basically going to be taking that last term that no longer has constants in it, it's got the actual values, and we're going to bring it to their side. So your ax x squared plus one should Yeah, that should definitely be squared. And then it sh should be squared here too. should have, oh man, uh oh, no, CX plus D does not get the square on it. All right, so that should fix it. So we got minus X cubed plus X squared. So that will be X cubed minus X squared plus X to the fourth plus 2x squared plus x equals, let's start, well, let's not foil out yet, or factor out yet on this side. Okay. 
So we're going to have x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x. I could factor out an x squared plus 1 on the right side without breaking a sweat. That would be pretty easy to do. The only problem is I don't see how to factor out x squared plus 1 on the other side as well. So I wouldn't be able to sort of cancel it out. So if I could factor out an x squared plus 1 on the right side, or on the, the left side, I would consider doing it on the right side. But I don't see a way to get x squared plus 1 out of this. I'm not that good of a factorer. So we're going to go for match coefficients, which will always work, as long as you don't make a mistake. You don't have to be clever to match coefficients, you just have to work hard and not make mistakes. So we're going to go that route. So distribute everything out. You should, you will get an x to the fifth term. That's okay. How many x to the fifths are on the left side? Zero of them. So it's okay to have x to the fifth, you're just going to have zero x to the fifth uh, when, you, when you multiply it all out. Algebra matching coefficient questions. There's one power of x I skipped. It's not actually written up there. There are no constant terms on either side. So there's a zero, x to the zero power or equation I didn't even bother writing down. All right, we do have a system of five equations, but they're only in three unknowns. And the way they're written, I know two of them right away. So all I need to do is find C. I don't need advanced linear algebra tools to do this. Pretty basic common sense. Some Algebra 1 skills can get me uh, C. So go ahead and figure out A, B, and C. No, A, D, and C.
So when you start doing this, your work's gonna be everywhere. So you probably wanna circle or highlight all your values because they're gonna be hidden inside a bunch of other algebra in a lot of places. All right, no major C's, hooray. Sometimes it works out really nicely. If you have a very overdetermined system, you probably won't even need a matrix whatsoever. If it was three equations, three unknowns, that'd be probably a different story. We had five equations though. All right, plugging every value back in, I need to go and look at the original because A needs to be sitting over X, not sitting over X squared. So make sure you look back at the order you picked them in. So you don't want to screw up and put the A value where you see C. That's going to be, well, maybe A and C are the same, but you understand what I mean. You don't want to switch around the order. So go back to the order you chose and then plug in A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that should be our final sum of fractions to get back to the original fraction. So I don't have time to check here. It's also not a useful calculus exercise to check. It's a useful algebra two exercise to check. So it's not a very useful time to spend, or a very useful way to spend our time in calc two is checking this. Uh, you can also type in a Wolfram and tell you really quickly what this adds up to. It really won't take more than a minute or two. Now the question is, can you integrate all of these? So most of these are super easy to integrate. So if I ask you to integrate, what is antiderivative one over x? Ln, that's just definition of what natural log is. How about negative one over x squared? What rule do you use? Power rule, that's x to negative two. Add one to the power, divide by that new power. All right, negative x plus one over x squared plus one. Not super easy, you can't use sub your way out of this one because of that stupid plus one. So how do we deal with that? So we'll talk about integration over here. So. It's not quite a tangent inverse because of that stupid x in the numerator. So I told you yesterday how to do a problem almost, the part almost exactly like this. How can I, you can't really use calculus here, so what algebra skills can I use? And you can't factor if you keep it real. They're irreducible. How can I flip this, change this around with algebra? You don't want to factor x squared plus one into x minus i, x plus i. That won't be very good. Yep, break it apart by the numerator. There's really not many other tricks you could use right here. Narrowed it down pretty quickly. So we're gonna have negative x over x squared plus one dx plus integral one over x squared plus one dx. Integral one over x squared plus one dx, that's tangent inverse x. Super easy. What about the negative x over x squared plus one? Just 
Killing time on your midterm. Oh man. Yeah, U sub. X squared plus one derivative is not quite negative x, but it's off by a constant. It's going to cancel out your x up there. So this, you do a u equals x squared plus one du two x dx x dx equals one half du. So it's going to be one half. You still get your negative sign, but it's pretty easy u sub once you see which one it is. All right, last up. Integral, this one looks scary, it may not be so bad. Negative x plus one over x squared plus one squared dx. So I could do the exact same trick we did last time, just have the denominator squared. So the integral x over x squared plus one squared dx plus integral 1 over x squared plus 1 squared dx. How about the first integral, x over x squared plus 1 squared? U sub. U -sub. If you say u sub, you'll rewrite like half the time. Well, we know some more techniques. Maybe it's down to a third of the time, but you'll be right pretty frequently. So u equals x squared plus 1 du 2x dx, etc., etc. So that's easy u sub. What about the other one? It doesn't really look like a good calculus form we've done before. Can't factor it. It's already been factored. I could expand it out, but then we're going to have some x to the fourth stuff going on. I don't really see integration by parts doing anything cool here. Maybe the bell will ring. We won't have to do this one. Yeah, so I like a tangent squared plus one is secant squared. So we could make a let x equal tan theta, and then follow through that way. So that's a good sh uh, good start. That is good because tangent squared plus one is secant squared, so that will get us out of this problem. Uh, dx equals tangent secant, no, secant squared theta d theta. That'll probably work. Uh, there's a uh, slightly different non-trig algebra way to do this, or at least a way to rewrite it. I could try to complete the square. I mean, I could complete the square. No, the square is completed, so that won't help. I think this will be the way you have to go for this one right here. So I strongly encourage you to finish these integrals right here and the previous one we did. Make sure you can actually integrate all of the uh, integrals that we got at the very end. Because your next quiz, or midterm, most likely will have partial fractions on it.